Hey, wonderful person. We're back here again talking about narcissists. And today we're talking about uh, what's called blank and stare, I think it's called, and gray rocking, which I am familiar with. <laughs> but first, before we get started, if you can hit the like button and the subscribe button to show your love to the channel. And I greatly appreciate it because it greatly helps out the channel. All right, so let's get on with it. What is blank stare technique? Who does it work with? Where does it work best? And why does it work at all? Okay, so what is it? It's just basically a blank stare with about four or five blinks. It's non-reaction. The narcissist doesn't want to feel what you feel. They're not empathic. They want to see your response to what they're doing. That tells them where they are in the world. They're standing in the world as they see it is a power structure. They want to know that they have more power than you in any given situation. And that goes by your reaction. So if you don't react, where do they stand now? They're not sure. It's like they're floating in space all of a sudden. They have no idea. It unnerves them more than it should. <laughs> and it upsets them a little bit. Now, where does it work? Let me show you what it looks like first before we get started. There are some people who don't understand what uh, blank stare looks like. So the narcissist says something, starts screaming and yelling at you, and this is what you're going to do. Nothing. Nothing. Not a sneer. You know, no. Nothing. Nothing. And it just unnerves them. And they'll usually stop whatever they're doing when they see that. They just stop. They just stop dead in their tracks verbally. It's like they had all this hostility and the world was ending and all of a sudden, quiet. And it's because they don't know what to do next. This is not something they had in their playbook. As a matter of fact, this is something they could never even dream of anybody doing. Yeah. So, and because it, it's, it's, a, it's like now they're having this existential crisis because you just turned their world upside down. It's all about the power for them. All about the power structure. And you just came back with something that upsets that. It was all about this or that, have power, not have, have power, being weak, being strong, being the victim or being the oppressor. And you came back with option three. And they don't even know what option three is. Now it's just like, what is this? What is happening? What just happened? Now they're going to start with... Uh, they're going to call you names. They're going to call you weird. They're going to say, did you have a stroke? Did you blank out? What do you do? They're trying to get under your skin. And uh, if you want to reply, you can just say, well, you know, and, and this is what I've done. I said, well, I have no obligation to argue with the person that's arguing like a child. You know, and they go on and they go on. Oh, I'm not having a child. And then they're acting like a child. And I'll say, well, a child throws a temper tantrum, yells names, uh, makes accusations, yells at the top of their lungs. Those are all things that you're doing. I have no obligation to engage with a person like that if I don't want to, and then I walk away. Now, if you're living at home with a narcissist like that, this technique really doesn't work very well. I mean, it will throw them off their game, but so what? They're just going to come back at you with more hostility, more names, trickier situations, and more devious, underhanded techniques to get you to reply. They just see it. The narcissist sees this as a phase that you're going through, a new technique, a new weapon to get back at them. That's all the narcissist sees it as. They don't see it as you're trying to protect yourself from their toxicity. They don't see that at all. They see it as a new weapon that you're trying out. And maybe you, if they keep hammering away at you, you'll get through with this phase and we can go back to having a normal relationship. <laughs> as, an, as the narcissist would like it to be. You be the servant 
and they be telling you what to do with your every moment of existence. That's how they would like it. Now, this does work very well, however, with two other kinds of people. Another kind of narcissist, which is the workplace narcissist, works very well with the workplace narcissist. Why? Because the workplace narcissist has somewhere else to go. When you are not the superiority supply that they like, because you are not uh, giving them what they want, which is basically what gray rocking is called. It's called a, um, it's called that because you're not giving any, anything. You're not reflecting anything back to them. You're just staring off into space and, and, and blanking out. Um, they, it's very unnerving to them. They don't, if I was having a conversation with somebody and somebody did that, I would think that they were thinking about what I was saying, or maybe they were daydreaming you know so what but for a narcissist this is disaster because they're yelling at you and you just don't reply at all but the workplace narcissist is not bothered with it that much because they have other supplies of superiority they have other people in the company sometimes thousands they're going to get bored with you and go on to somebody else and gray rocking and blank and stare works very well in the workplace because they have other places to go. They're, they're not trapped with you. It's not a one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of people that um, are married to narcissists, that's the only other person in the house. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. And it doesn't work that well when you're trapped with a narcissist because you're not going to heal the narcissist. They're not going to come to a conclusion, oh, well, you know, they're not going to be, <laughs> right? You're never going to convince the narcissist of basically anything. It, it, which is, it's a very difficult situation and all the stars have to align and they have to be a narcissist that is very low on the percentage scale of how often they're triggered into their narcissistic space in order to get a narcissist to come to the conclusion that they're not then that that they their narcissism might be something bad. I could barely get it out in words. <laughs> it could barely. Yeah, every it's not, it, and it's not worth it for you to go through that, because you're not a psychiatrist. You don't have the ability to put them through therapy. You don't have the ability to prescribe medication for them, which is going to make the whole situation easier and going to change their perspective and make them regret their narcissism you don't have the ability to do that you're just going to argue with them or gray rock them forever it's not, it doesn't work when you live with a narcissist it, i've never seen it work living with a narcissist because they just up their game and they try something else and they just this is what they do this is their their existence you're not changing them you're just changing your response to them now, you might get fewer arguments. You probably will get fewer arguments from them when you gray rock them every now and then because they don't know what you're going to do. So sometimes it's just not worth it to argue with you anymore. But make no mistake, this is still a narcissist and they will be coming back for another argument and another attack and some more superiority supply. Yeah. Now, in the workplace, however... That's flipped on its head. They don't have to come back to you for another for another superiority supply. They can go to somebody else. They probably go to two or three or four other people for that supply already anyway. If they're going to you and you, you gray rock them, they're gone. Another person, uh, another, and I used this about a week and a day ago. Exactly a week and a day ago. <laughs> On somebody who had a uh, had narcissistic tendencies because they were raised by a narcissist, yeah, that happens. So a narcissist has this tool belt full of tools they use: uh, arguing, name calling, hostility, finding your weak points. Uh, you know, a whole thing, right? They have a whole tool belt full of tools they use to get that superiority supply and feel good about where they are in life and play that power game because to them it's all a power game. But sometimes when you're around a narcissist too much or you're raised by a narcissist, you take some of those tools on to yourself because you either thought they were the 
that was all there was available, or it just looked like it was better than what you were doing. So I was basically verbally assaulted with yelling and demands by somebody who had narcissistic tendencies, but they weren't actually a narcissist. And I gray rocked them. I stared off into space and blinked and it worked like a charm. They just, it was like I wasn't there all of a sudden and it went on to the next person. Like it was, it was night and day. It works perfectly because that's not what they're looking for. They're not looking for, they're looking for a response. Okay, just the, the, the person that's using this as a tool and uh, could be just a normal person using this as a tool. They're looking for a response. They're yelling to get you to respond, right? We yell at stuff to get people and animals and sometimes inanimate objects to get what we want. And if people aren't responding, then who is responding? Who is doing things here, right? <laughs> And that's how that worked. It worked really well. So, yes, gray rocking, uh, which is just basically never giving the narcissist much emotional feedback. Uh, it doesn't really work that well in a home situation. You'll get less arguments and they will get the narcissist will start to go through actual kind of like withdrawal symptoms, I swear. Uh, because they'll get more hostile and because now they're wanting you used to deliver a superiority supply and now you're not and they'll tell you you've changed and not to the good right you're weird now you're uh, throw in those names and all that stuff right and it a lot of that is true you have changed you've grown up you're an adult now <laughs> in these arguments you're not playing the the abuser to the narcissist victim anymore and they don't like it and they if you live with somebody who argues constantly a narcissist you're going to feel that hostility got nowhere to go so i'm not sure i'm just telling you how you might want to use these in your life and i'm telling you the side effects if you do so you know what to expect I think it's worth it if you live with a narcissist, although you have to be aware that there's probably going to be side effects to that, especially if you use the gray rocking out in public. They respond, very, all the narcissists respond very well to that because they have this mask, the mask that they put on in public to appear normal. They know they're not, but they want to appear that they are and if you have this third mystical quality about you out in public they don't really know where to go with that and so they behave uh, i've seen them behave usually a lot better than they usually do because they don't know what you're going to do though so they don't know what they're going to do all right so that's the blank stare and the gray rock technique which can work very well in different situations but let's remember this isn't about battling with narcissists. This is about us getting on with our lives without narcissists. So we don't have to be damaged by them. They are out there in the community. They are everywhere and they burn through relationships and jobs pretty quickly because nobody else wants them around and because they sabotage everything on themselves. That's why it's a disorder. So uh, it's it helps us move through life without that BS in our lives and get on with our best lives. That's what we're trying to do here. No, that's what we are doing here. So now let's get on with our great lives. Boom. <laughs>